Hey guys, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. You asked for it, so you're gonna get it. The X-Men have been one of the most popular groups of heroes ever. And since the first X-Men movie that came out in 2000, they've gone super mainstream. While the movies aren't perfect and made some mistakes, <coughs> sewing Deadpool's mouth shut, <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, they did allow us to see all our favorite X-Men in action. One thing to keep in mind is that I'll be talking about my own favorite X-Men. So chances are you'll disagree, and that's fine. Let me know what would be your top heroes in the comments. I'm Ron McKenzie Lafergie with Top 10 Nerd, and here is my list of top 10 members of the X-Men. Number 10, Cyclops. I'm kind of torn with Cyclops. His power is really cool, and it's super interesting that his power is such a burden on him. It would suck to have to wear that visor all the time for fear of melting people. But Scott Summers is just so dull. It, maybe if you spent less time whining about your girlfriend spending time with other dudes, you wouldn't have to spend time with other dudes. Just sit her down, hold her hands, look her in the eyes. Uh, all right. Number 9, Iceman. Bobby Drake has the ability to manipulate water and ice at a cost. His whole body was turned to ice. Iceman was always a favorite of mine growing up. I was pretty easy to impress. His power is cool, he looks cool, so he's cool. Cool, cool, cool. But I still like Iceman a lot, particularly because he's just a classic member of the team. When he was first introduced, he looked ridiculous. More like the Michelin Man than the Iceman we love now. But he got an update that made him way sleeker and became a fan favorite. Number 8, Scarlet Witch. Wanda Maximoff is the sister of Quicksilver and was thought to be the daughter of Magneto for a time. Originally believed to be a mutant, she in fact gained her power to manipulate reality through a series of experiments done on her as a child by Wolfgang von Strucker. Scarlet Witch is particularly cool to me because her power is kind of undefined, which gives the writers a lot of freedom as to how she uses it. One crazy example of this is when she caused the decimation event, which stripped most mutants of their powers. This was a controversial event that was much needed in my opinion, since the number of mutants had risen to a pretty ridiculous degree. Just goes to show the kind of power Scarlet Witch wielded. Don't get on her bad side. Number 7, Nightcrawler. Kurt Wagner, or Kurt Wagner, has a mutation that gives him superhuman agility, adhesive hands and feet, and of course, teleportation. Plus, it changed the way he looked, turning him into a blue, furry, demon looking guy. I always found Nightcrawler to be so sick. It, partly because teleporting is amazing, it would be so awesome to be able to do it, and partly because he just looks freaking cool. His teleportation has its limits, but it's a super versatile power and it allows for some really sweet fight scenes. Number 6, Beast. I feel like there needs to be more love for Hank McCoy or Beast. While he started out as kind of a weird character, basically a guy with big feet, he eventually grew into the big blue furry guy that we all know and love. I always loved Beast because even though he was clearly built for fighting, he prefers to use his incredible brain to solve problems, even taking political positions to fight for the rights of mutants. When I was a kid, I read constantly, so I really like the idea of a superhero who would rather enjoy a good book than a good fight. Number 5, Quicksilver. Pietro Maximoff is a man who is really fast. Not the most original power, but he's still a great character. It's important to note that like Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver wasn't born with his super speed, but rather had it bestowed upon him through experiments done on him as a child. While he started out as a bad guy, he soon transitioned to the heroic side of things, and boy am I glad he did. I was actually first introduced to Quicksilver with the Quicksilver comics, when he was leading the Knights of Wondagore, a team of animals endowed with humanoid form and intelligence. I really took a liking to him from that. The only problem I have with Quicksilver is that his speed is kind of OP. Like, I, I feel like he could have just done everything in Days of Future Past. But he's still one of my faves. Number 4, Mystique. Mystique is classic X-Men, appearing in pretty much every X-Men movie or TV show ever. With the ability to change shape to that of any person and mimic their voice, Raven Darkholm is a force to be reckoned with. You never know when she might be in the room with you until it's too late and you're staring at her feet while bleeding to death. Mystique starts off selfish and totally ruthless, but as her character develops, we start to see new sides of her. As time goes on, on, she becomes less objectively evil and more just someone concerned with the safety and welfare of other mutants, which is pretty admirable. Number 3, Magneto. Max Eisenhardt, or Magneto, is not only one of my favorite X-Men villains, but one of my favorite villains of all time. This is partly because of his awesomely versatile powers, but mostly because I understand why it is that he's doing the things that we see as evil. I understand his inability to trust others after learning about his tragic past with his parents being murdered by Nazis. I understand why he feels oppressed as a mutant later in life, since the non-mutants do seem to be attacking 
attacking his human rights with the Registration Act. I don't think what he's doing is right, but I understand the motives behind his actions, and this is what makes for an amazing bad guy. Plus, Michael Fassbender and Sir Ian McKellen both absolutely crush the role, so he's really well represented in the films. Number two. Deadpool. As if I could leave Deadpool off this list. Even though he rarely works with the X-Men, Deadpool is too great a character to not include. After an experimental cancer treatment mutates him into a freaky, testicle looking dude who can regenerate pretty much anything, Wade Wilson decided to use his powers to fight bad guys. With his two katanas and whatever other weapons he can get his hands on, he kicks butt while breaking the fourth wall and making readers die laughing. If you haven't seen the movie, first of all, how? Watch it now. If you have seen it, watch it again, it's on Netflix. And honestly, I enjoyed it even more the second time. Number one. Wolverine. I hate to go with the obvious choice, but I feel like Wolverine might be objectively the best member of the X-Men. Sure, he isn't the strongest or the most powerful, but I find Wolverine is a good level of, I'll help the team, but I'm also looking out for myself. I'm not a fan of all good or all evil characters, so it's great that Wolverine isn't constrained by what is right all the time. It's also cool that even though he has amazing regeneration abilities, he's still very much putting his life on the line when he fights. In most fights, he's bringing six daggers to a magic fight, and the only reason he comes out on top is that he's a Bad. Plus, in case you didn't know, he's Canadian. He's Canadian. Oh yeah. That's it for now, guys. Want to see a part two? Let us know in the comment section, or let me know any other X-Men characters you'd like to have their own top ten. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and swing by my Twitter to say hi at Ron underscore McKenzie underscore. Until next time, I'm Ron McKenzie Lafergie with Top Ten Nerd. Later, Gators.